Let's break down how you can draw a similar exploded axonometry in Morfolio Trace on iPad to easily explain your project. We'll cover the whole process with lots of tips and since I originally drew this a few years ago, there have been a lot of updates and new features in Trace. I'll show you a smarter and quicker way how we can draw in Morfolio Trace today. Let's go! Hi and welcome, David here from Sketch Like an Architect. The reason to use an axonometric view like this is to offer a 3D overview of the house volume and its relation to the surroundings in a way that's easy to understand. This is still a design concept in progress, so I use the drawing process also to help me explore and discover different angles of the design, evaluate problems and opportunities, and verify things like volumetric composition, ratio between glazed and opaque areas, how the house actually sits on the terrain, and also the material choices. But let's take it from the beginning. Differently from the perspective drawing of the same concept, I start with an axonometric grid here to help me set up the whole drawing. Now you can add such grid in a few different ways in Morfolio Trace. When you start a new project, or add it as a background to the base layer, you can do it via adding an image, or via the wrench tool. For those of you who are a bit more technically oriented, this is an isometric view to be specific. There are also two other types of axonometric projections, diametric and trimetric projection. And the only difference is in the angles between the axes. Once I have my isometric grid set up, the easiest way to draw clean and precise line work in isometry is to use the smart ruler and set it to 30 degree angle. What people often miss is that you don't have to draw along the ruler like you would on paper. You can simply activate the ruler tool and put it aside on your screen to draw without it. This allows us to draw straight lines in 30 degree increments so we can quickly and comfortably start our drawing following the isometric grid. To add color fills, I create a new layer to keep it separate from my line work and I drag this new layer below my layer with the lines, so that the lines stay visible on top of any color fills I add. By default, we draw in the first visible layer on top of the layer stack in Morfolio Trace, just like we would with layers of tracing paper. Because I move this new layer somewhere in the middle of the stack, I need to double tap it to activate it and be able to draw in it. Now I use the roller brush with 100% opacity to color in just the areas I want. I take advantage of the straight line between the first or initial and the last point of my roller brush area. If I want to erase an area later, I can use an eraser for sure, but I find using the selection tool more elegant and precise. In this case, I use the selection tool with segmented line mode to select and delete an area of the color fill. To add external images and photos, click on the image icon in the layer panel and choose the location of your file. After clicking the file, it gets imported into your trace project and you can change its size, position and crop it to a desired proportion. Each of the images will get automatically imported on a new layer. If I want to represent these real-life materials in my isometric drawing, the quickest way is to use a smart hatch. The smart hatch tool can read your drawing in the project and fill and calculate closed areas. If the fill spills all over like this, simply adjust the sensitivity threshold to select the desired area only. We can fill it with a solid color or any of the pre-made commonly used hatches and patterns. In this case, I want to use the stone texture. I can change its scale, opacity, color and invert it if I like. Once I'm happy with the setting, I can apply the same texture to other closed areas. You can also transform any smart hatch, any part of your drawing really, or any external image. 
If you're interested, here's another video for you focused just on texturing techniques inside Trace, using both hatches and external images and photos. Once the majority of the isometric drawing is done and material images are imported, last thing I want is to complement it and tie it together with a few construction and annotation lines. For that, I create another layer. I use the ruler again and I switch the line type from solid to dotted. To balance the overall hierarchy and readability of the drawing, I adjust the layer opacity. And that, my friends, concludes this video about exploded axonometry with Morfolio Trace. Thanks so much for watching and happy sketching!